good to see everybody here tonight. Glad everybody made it back. Um, and uh, glad everyone was here this morning to hear uh, Brother Don Harper this morning with a great, wonderful lesson um, that we can all take and uh, use in our everyday lives. Um, today I am going to talk about um, coming back to God. And uh, today I'm going to use a song um, that my mom, it's her favorite song and she sings it almost all the time. Um, and it's called um, No Matter What. And uh, we listen to a Christian radio so we hear a lot of different songs that have a really great message. And this is one of them that uh, I'm going to share with you tonight that just touched my heart so much that I felt that I needed to share. Um, so I guess I'll read the song, um, the lyrics of the song to you. Here it says, A lot of us grew up believing at any moment we could lose it all. And at the drop of a hat, God might turn his back and move on. A lot of us feel like we blew it, thinking we were just too far gone. But I want you to know there's still hope for you now. Here, um, just to stop here and mention something. Uh, we can still come back to God, even if we've done things wrong in our life. We still can come back to Him and be with Him. Um, and I'll read again here. It says, No matter what you've done, you can't erase His love. Nothing can change it. You're not separated, no matter what. Again here, I'll say... God will always love us, no matter what we do in our lives, no matter what we do in just everything that we do or wherever we go, God will always love us eternally. And just because of the things we do, He won't love us any less. And he'll, He will always be there for us, even if we fail, we fail Him. Here's the next um, stanza. It says... There's never been a better time to get honest. There's never been a better time to get clean. So come as you are, run to the cross, and be free. Oh, be free. Here again we can see where when we fall short of God and we get away from God, He will always accept us back. And at any time in our lives, He will always accept us back. No matter what we've done. Here. And again, it says here, no matter what we've done, you can't erase his love. Nothing can change it. You're not separated. No matter where you run, he's always holding on. You're still a daughter. You're still a son, no matter what. He will always love us no matter what we do against him. We are the ones that he chose. And when... It says here you can't erase his love. His love is eternal and it will never go away from us. But we can choose to separate our love from him by the things that we do. But we can always come back to him and always love him again. And when it says you are not separated, we're the ones that choose to be separated from God. We're the ones that push us. We're the ones that push away God and push us aside from him. And God wants us to just be closer to Him. And it says here again, "Don't know what you've been. Don't know what you've been taught. Don't know what you've been told. All I know is my God will never let go of you. And I don't know what you've seen. Don't know what you've been through. All I know is my God will never let go of you. He will never <coughs> let go. He will never, never let go of it." And here, if I'll read it again, it says, Do not go, do not know what you've been taught, do not know what you've been told. And a little further, it says, I do not know what you've seen, don't know what the things you've been through. No matter what we've been told or no matter what we've done in our lives, God will always accept us back. God is always there holding his arms out, ready to love us again, ready for us to be with him each and every day. And it goes on to here to say, No matter what you've done, you can't erase his love. Nothing can change it. You're not separated. No matter where you run, 
He's always holding on. You're still a daughter. You're still a son, no matter what. And again, it's just pointing back to the point where God will love us eternally. And we will always have God to turn back to, no matter what we do in our lives, no matter what we've, where we've gone or what we've done. And if you'll turn over with me in the Bible to Luke um, chapter 15 to verse 11. And I'm going to read the uh, parable of the lost son. And it says here, and I'm reading out of the New Century Version. Then Jesus said, a man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, give me my share of the property. So the father divided the property between the, his two sons. Then the younger son gathered up all that was his and traveled far to another country. There he wasted his money in foolish living. After he'd spent everything, a time came when there was no food anywhere in the country, and the son was poor and hungry. He got a job with one of the citizens there who sent the son into the fields to feed pigs. The son was so hungry that he wanted to eat the pods the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he realized what he was doing, he thought, all of my father's servants have plenty of food, but I am here almost dying with hunger. I will leave and return to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, but let me be like one of your servants. So the son left and went to his father. While the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt sorry for his son. So the father ran and hugged and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have since sinned against God and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Hurry, bring the best clothes and put them on him. Also put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get a fat calf and kill it, so we can have a feast and celebrate. My son was dead, but now he is alive again. He was lost, but now he is found. So they began to celebrate. And I chose th those verses because it shows that when the son had left, well, sorry, when the son was with his father, first his father loved him and his father treated him as his son and he had everything. And he decided to go do his own thing, to do his, by what he wanted to do and do, and go away from his father. And this is just like when we, when we as Christians want to do what we want to do and want to go away from God and decide to do the things that we think make us happy and push God away out of our lives. And here, I'll go back to the lost son here. And, it, and when the son was gone, he was starving. And at this point, he hit rock bottom. He hit the lowest point in his life because of the things he had done. And he was willing to eat the pods that the pigs were eating. The, he was at the lowest of the low. And when we turn away from God, we are just like him because we are starving spiritually and sometimes we're even starving physically or we've hit rock bottom physically or hit bo rock bottom spiritually. And here we can see that we still have God. God will never stop loving us just because of the things that we do. Just like when the son, he was thinking, my, my father has servants and they're, they're not hungry. They're not starving. God will feed us spiritually. He will be there for us through everything. And God never stopped loving us even when we do things wrong. The father never stopped loving his son when he was doing sinful things in a faraway country and living foolishly. And as long as we are alive, God will love us. He will never stop loving us. And when the son returned, 
The father was there with open arms, hugged him and kissed him, and gave him the best clothes that he had, and gave him a ring, and brought him back into the family just like nothing had ever happened. And they celebrated. And when we come back to God, God rejoices in heaven. And he forgives us for the things we have done and he restores us back to his kingdom. And we are together with him again. So, my point tonight is that whatever we've done in the past or whatever any, uh, or anyone that we know has done in the past, they can always come back to God and do things, do what's right with God and come back if they are truly sincere about it. If they truly want to be with God again. And if you need prayers of the church, please come forward as we stand and sing. So